On June 5, 2023, Lee Berger held a press conference at Stony Brook University on Long Island, New York. He announced the discovery of cave art at Rising Star in South Africa, etched engravings likely made by Homo the Lady. It is being compared to Donald Johansson's earth-shattering press conference in 1975, announcing the discovery of Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis. From National Geographic, Lucy, one of the oldest known human ancestors, an Australopithecus afarensis specimen, discovered in Hadar, Ethiopia. The team led by Donald Johansson nicknamed the skeleton Lucy after the Beatles' Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which was played at the celebration. The world's leading paleoanthropologist, Chris Stringer of the London Natural History Museum, declares the Homo Naledi find to have, quote, profound implications for our reconstructions of human evolution, end quote. In this video, we will give you details on the magnificent discovery from South Africa just announced. And a special welcome to viewers across Africa. Ujambo, uhaligani, ni mafarahi sana kukuona. Tafadali, naseme kiswahili kidogo. Asante sana. First, some background on Lee Berger, his team, and the Rising Star Cave System, where the discoveries were made. The Rising Star Cave System is located 60 miles northwest of Johannesburg. Map of the Cave System. Homo Naledi was discovered in 2012 by a team of amateur cavers organized by Lee Berger. An unemployed diamond hunter, Pedro Basha, visited his old friend Lee Berger at the university, looking for work. As Berger described it, Pedro rode up on his old motorcycle. Berger hired him on the spot. Pedro went to the local cave spelunking club and recruited Stephen Tucker and Rick Hunter. The trio spent three months searching cave sites with little to show. Berger suggested Try the Rising Star Cave System outside of Johannesburg. At the cave site, Stephen Tucker noticed a small fissure that they had never explored before. He squeezed into it and fell down a shaft. They continued downward. After crawling through a tiny crack, they fell into a chamber. On the floor were scattered hominid bones. They rushed to Berger's home. It was late at night. Pedro said, you're going to want to let us in. They showed him the photos. Berger knew instantly that they had made a find of a lifetime. He called up National Geographic in Washington, D.C. The next few weeks, Berger organized a team of slender archaeology students to do the excavations. From the Smithsonian, over 1,550 specimens from at least 150 Homo Lady individuals were recovered from the site, the largest collection of single hominid bones that has ever been found in Africa. Hunter and Tucker found an additional 150 Homo Naledi specimens in the nearby Lesedi chamber. Over the years, further excavations were led by University of Viswarasan archaeologist Kenai Louis Molopiani. They made an amazing discovery in the Lesedi chamber of a skull from a six-year-old Homo Naledi child they named Leti. In 2022, the team discovered evidence of fire use by Homo Naledi in the cave. From CNN, researchers have uncovered evidence that members of a mysterious archaic human species carve symbols on cave walls. The revelations could change the understanding of human evolution. Until now, such behaviors only have been associated with larger-brained Homo sapiens. History with Kaylee got the very first interview with Lee Berger after his press conference. Quote, you can see the engravings. You can see they are large. That's a hashtag. End quote. Lee Berger. From Scientific American, the engravings consist of isolated lines and geometric motifs, including crosses, squares, triangles, X's, hash marks, and other shapes. The markings were deeply incised into dolomite rock 
in locations close to the burials. Spanish archaeologist Maria Martinon Torres writing at theconversation.com Engravings and producing rock art has major implications for the cognitive abilities of a species. It denotes a capacity for representation and the creation and communication of meaning via abstract symbols. Quite bizarrely, the Homo Naledi engravings are strikingly similar to engravings made by Neanderthals in Spain 39,000 years ago. From PNAS.org, 2014. An abstract pattern engraved by Neanderthals consists of a deeply impressed cross-hatching carved into the bedrock of the cave. This discovery demonstrates the Neanderthals' capacity for abstract thought and expression. Quote, Homo naledi, whose brain was around a third of the size of ours, may have used fire as a light source, gone to great lengths to bury its dead, and engraved designs on cave walls that were symbolic. End quote. Laura Helmuth, editor, Scientific American, on Twitter. For Scientific American, Homo naledi had a brain size of just 450 to 600 cubic centimeters. For comparison, Homo sapiens' brain size averages around 1,400 cubic centimeters. As chronicled here on this channel, ethnic Europeans have up to 6% Neanderthal DNA admixture. Neanderthal brain size was 1,450 to 1,550 cubic centimeters. Asians and Melanesians have up to 7% Denisovan DNA admixture. Denisovan brain size range from 1400 cc to 1600 cc. In 2020, UCLA geneticists Sriram Sankararaman and Arun Durvasula released a study that found modern Africans have up to 19% archaic ghost species admixture. South African genetics researcher Martha Christina, quote, Many South Africans have morphological traits resembling those of Homo naledi. These traits are prevalent, especially in Southern Africans, some members of the African population here within the Republic of South Africa, end quote. Professor John Hawkes, University of Wisconsin Lecture, 2017, quote, We do know that Africans derive a fraction of their DNA from archaic lineages. It could be Homo naledi, end quote. Rising Star member Professor Stephen Churchill of Duke University, YouTube interview, The Dissenter, June 2022, quote, Homo naledi has a brain size of 550 cc, about the size of a gorilla's brain at 400 cc. Very primitive. These are aspects we see in the Australopiths. A little ape man, if you will. End quote. Quote, what's interesting is the work that has been done on the genome of the people who are indigenous to Africa, what they call a ghost lineage, which contributed genetically that could be Homo naledi, end quote. Augustine Fuentes, anthropology professor at Princeton and a member of the Rising Star team, is quoted at both the AP and Washington Post. Quote, big brains are still important. They just don't explain what we thought they explained, end quote. Controversies will no doubt continue to rage over the coming months and years over Homo naledi. We will be giving continuous coverage to Homo Naledi on this channel. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, hit the like button, and please pass this video on to others. Thank you.